Uh, so I'm Peter Willis. I'm leading the software based networks research team in BT's applied research, and I've been working on the next generation digital infrastructure project since its inception. And just a reminder what that is. It's a five million pounds EPSLC prosperity partnership over five years started in November of 2017. And it's it's funded 50% by BT and 50% by the EPSLC. It's developing next generation data driven methods and technologies for brilliant autonomic digital infrastructure of the future and involves a multi multidisciplinary research program from four universities, Lancaster, Cambridge, Surrey and Bristol. And today we have Professor Ning Wang from the University of Surrey specialising in network and service management, quality of service, quality of experience and 5G networks. And Dr. Harris Rostos from Lancaster University specialising in programmable network control operating systems and unikernels. And they're going to talk to you about intent based networks. So over to Professor Ney. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Yeah, so uh, let, uh, let me start. So basically, uh, uh, we'd like to take take this uh, an hour, uh, basically introducing what we have been doing on the uh, this kind of uh, intent based networking concept. So uh, if you look at the overall organization of this uh, talk, uh, basically, I will first start, or I will kick off with the overview on the basic concept of internet based networking, which is actually originated from the traditional uh, network configuration management. And then my project colleague uh, Harris will um, uh, uh, go deep into specific, uh, let's say, including the whole life cycle of intent based networking or intent based network management, including capturing and management, as well as monitoring and verification and validation. And now I'll come back to uh, let's introduce more complex uh, scenario of um, intent based networking, uh, specifically to the multi stakeholder environments. OK, so uh, just uh, just a, 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 a few minutes on the basic concept of this kind of IBN or uh, um, uh, framework. Uh, so as you can see, that's uh, this kind of concept uh, originated from the classical uh, configuration network configuration management paradigm. So if you look at how um, administrators configure networks, uh, let's say um, uh, 20 uh, more than 20 years ago, uh, basically, uh, everything is based on this kind of explicit command. OK, so uh, for instance, if you want to uh, change the network behavior, you have to give explicit instructions uh, or configurations, for instance, forward the traffic destined to a, a specific location. And then about, uh, let's say, 20 years ago, uh, people tried to, let's say, make this kind of configuration management more flexible. Uh, this is why uh, 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 people, uh, let's say, came up with the paradigm of policy based <coughs> network management, which allows more more flexible and dynamic reconfiguration of um, uh, the network based on specific conditions or requirements. So the typical, let's say, um, uh, semantics of, uh, let's say, policy-based network management is uh, if something happens, then you can execute a pre-provisioned uh, network policy in order to change the network behavior appropriately. Okay, uh, but if you look at all these kind of, let's say, traditional paradigms, uh, no matter whether it is static configuration or dynamic configuration, uh, the, the, the bottom line is that it is the job of the network administrator to tell the network what to do and how to do it. OK, but when uh, when this evolves into the um, intent based network management, which is the topic we are uh, 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 looking at today, this is uh, allows the clients to, let's say, express what I want rather than how you are how you should do it. OK, so for instance, um, you can uh, the, the uh, administrator could express the intent like I want to do load balance, but how exactly uh, the, the load uh, can be balanced, that's down to the uh, let's say, intent engine to pass the um, the expression to, uh, let's say, translate or, or, or compile such kind of requirement or intent into specific network configurations. So if you look at the basic semantic of uh, intent expression, uh, fundamentally you need to have some sort of key element like action. So exactly what needs to be done. So that could range from, let's say, protect uh, your network infrastructure or, or specific network components like uh, links or nodes, uh, cache content, specific, uh, let's say, uh, type of uh, video content uh, you'd like to cache, uh, uh, ranging towards, for, for instance, more abstractive sort of let's say requirement like load balancing or guarantee some sort of some sort of service performance or try to minimize or maximize some sort of uh, service level performance 
Okay, and uh, 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 and also object that is which entity you'd like to target in terms of uh, intent that could be network interface, network elements, or or a group of um, let's say um, network entities like for instance shared risk link group or a non-deterministic um, entity like most congested network link uh, which could be dynamic for instance um, uh, basically at this moment this this is the um, let's say uh, the congested link but after a while the other link could be could get congested and sometimes uh, you can also include the target values for instance your target your intent target as well as conditions okay for instance it could be any time or during a specific time of the day or, or when something happens who can express intent so if this kind of if you view this kind of uh, uh, let's say a paradigm starting from the confusion management point of view basically by default the the, the first uh, let's say entity that can come to our mind is network operators because this is the uh, let's say the chance for network operators to uh, let's say uh, maximize the automation in network control and configuration and also at the same time try to uh, let's say reduce the uh, let's say network misconfigurations by human errors okay so that means uh, instead of complex and hectic sort of network configurations if uh, we can make use of the intent based networking uh, technology then uh, the, it is only the job for the network operator to express high level requirement or intent for instance to load balancing according to specific conditions or protect my network um, uh, uh, basically um, after I think uh, um, uh, um, uh, Harris will also give some specific use cases and in addition to this we can also envisage the uh, the, the, the um, other types of uh, clients that can also express their uh, intent in addition to network operators who actually owns the network infrastructure Structure. So, so we can conceive a lot of, let's say, external uh, clients or customers, not necessarily end users, but also, uh, let's say, vertical service providers that could express their requirement, in particular to ask for service guarantees if they want to deploy their service on top of the network. Okay, for instance, a video content provider like YouTube or Netflix, they could certainly uh, uh, express their intent in order to guarantee, provide guaranteed data rate or video quality uh, to all their subscribers. But it, at the end of the day, this has to be fulfilled by the underlying network who provides uh, sort of, let's say, a uh, shoot service in order to uh, for uh, for such kind of uh, seamless content delivery. Uh, but of course, we can also convey, uh, uh, let's say, uh, conceive uh, uh, other types of clients, even including end users. But but whether that is scalable or not, uh, this is another story. But in principle, end users can definitely be uh, part of the uh, holders who can express the, uh, their intent and similarly enterprise networks as well. Okay. And, and then uh, the one interesting, let's say, research, uh, let's say, um, uh, topics, how are you going to express intent? Okay. So uh, if we revisit the, uh, the previous configurations we start from a particular language or, or, or command line interface okay so I'm sure um, uh, basic people uh, have uh, uh, are familiar with this kind of let's say line by line configuration where uh, they, the, the the good news is these kind of uh, command line interfaces are uh, let's say sort of um, human understandable you know what you are by reading the command you know what you are doing okay uh, but uh, with this kind of configuration management moving on then we have uh, some new let's say uh, let's say meta schemas or paradigms to to support such kind of configuration management involving document based like netconf and most recently we can have this kind of let's say web based uh, or GUI based network management which provide graphic sort of uh, support um, rather than this kind of more sort of uh, um, uh, let's say language like sort of uh, network configuration okay so uh, this is um, Involve, uh, involving uh, during the past, let's say, um, several, uh, let's say, few decades about configuration management. But if we change our view from configuration to intent, what are the implications? Okay, so uh, for those people who are uh, who knows about uh, intent-based networking, probably uh, you know uh, basically there have been already existing um, let's say solutions uh, like an intent engine uh, which can pass or translate or compile. Uh, or yeah, uh, let's say high level uh, sort of um, uh, intent into specific network uh, network configurations. Uh, and uh, now uh, one typical question we have been thinking about is, uh, previously, I mentioned there could be so many sort of uh, type of stakeholders or client that could express intent. Uh, but broad uh, broadly speaking, we can uh, categorize them into uh, two 
uh, let's say, um, uh, categories. One is the uh, uh, the stakeholders who actually owns the network infrastructure. And then, uh, based on this assumption, uh, basically, we, uh, uh, we know the owner of such kind of, let's say, infrastructures um, knows what is the capability of the network. What are the protocols that have already been deployed within my network? Okay, so in this case, if I want to express my intent in order to, let's say, optimize my network resources or save energy or load balancing or do some sort of, let's say, achieve some sort of robustness. And then I know uh, basically um, uh, what type of network I've got. And then basically the intent engine could be, uh, um, uh, it is possible for the intent engine to translate the high level, uh, let's say, um, intent into low level network configurations based on specific network environments and also the available protocols. And on the other hand, we also look at the external uh, clients like uh, content service providers or even any type of uh, vertical uh, application provider who would like to express their in uh, intent or, or service requirement um, specifically, but without necessarily knowing what's going on. Uh, on the online network. And then uh, basically the key challenge is because we have so many, di so, uh, such a diverse variety of um, uh, uh, external service providers ranging from content providers to IoT providers, or even for instance, uh, if you look at 5G typical use cases, uh, like um, industry, IoT or uh, driverless cars, there could be so many application, new applications that require different requirements uh, and, and express different intents. And then it is the job of the this kind of intent to, let's say, to uh, uh, let's say flexibly um, translate such kind of uh, externally exp expressed intent to, to specific requirements in order to achieve uh, such kind of requirements. Okay, so so this is. Probably ten minutes overview about um, uh, about the general concept of um, uh, in the in the intent framework, and I, then I will hand over to uh, uh, Harris to uh, go deep into specific intent lifecycle before I um, uh, introduce more complex scenario. So I will now uh, hand over to Harris then. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, you've seen an excellent introduction uh, from Professor Wang. Uh, on the topic of intents and what they actually represent. So uh, I will try to go a bit deeper in my presentation and try to um, uh, uh, present how we can actually how we can design systems to fulfill intents. Um, so um, typically intents, they include three uh, specific domains. Um, uh, you have the user, which is the instigator of the intents. Um, an intent management framework which is responsible to translate high level goals defined by the user into the in deployment. And then we have the infrastructure which is responsible, which um, using programmable interfaces can actually um, support uh, the intent requirements. Um, typically for intents we have two control loops, uh, one big one which involves the user and the user would describe the intent, the intent management framework would translate that into an effective deployment plan and then by using the available monitor capabilities of the infrastructure um, translate that into a, a user recognizable information and then there is also uh, a, a smaller control loop um, between the intents and the infrastructure uh, which is uh, effectively doing a continuous monitoring of the deployment of, of intents. Uh, and if some of the goals of the intent are not, val uh, are not valid, uh, then it triggers uh, a redeployment, a request for a, uh, um, a, a replanning uh, for the deployment of the effective configuration to support the, the intent. So uh, for this part then of our exploration, we wanted to uh, explore how uh, we can allow non-technical users, uh, people that they're non um, 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 business, that they're not network operators, to actually interact with our intent management framework. Um, and you know, a common scenario, for example, is we have this big event uh, that happens like the Olympic Games, and you want somehow to express into the network management layer that we don't actually want to do any upgrades right now in order to avoid any QoS problems. So in order to support that, we developed uh, an intent framework uh, that uh, allows users to interact using natural, natural language and uh, consequently um, uh, have as effect to uh, deploy uh, connectivity uh, capabilities across the network infrastructure. 
Uh, for this initial capability, we have uh, uh, a video demonstrating the, um, uh, the capabilities of our system, and we have an implementation of an intent manager. Um, so I'm going to describe at this point how uh, our technology works and also describe to you um, um, what type of capability supports and point you later on to a demo video that we have prepared um, uh, uh, to watch uh, after this talk. Uh, so typically um, in our system, uh, what we want to do is to provide the ability to the user so you have the user and uh, in order uh, to support um, um, intent input uh, in natural language, uh, we uh, create a new Google service uh, application that allows the user to interact with the network infrastructure. Uh, in order to support uh, that uh, Google service, we're using uh, a popular uh, chat box uh, implementation framework called Dialogflow uh, from Google. Uh, which is capable of analyzing natural language and extract from that specific information and feed back to other processes in a cloud uh, application. Um, so using Google Assistant, we can uh, allow the user to express a specific network of intent. Uh, Dialogflow would interact with the Heroku service uh, to uh, explain what it has understood from the user. Uh, we would then um, validate with the user whether we have enough information, whether the information we have are correct. Uh, and once everything has been validated, then uh, our system would translate this, uh, the output of our dialog flow data into an intent definition language, which is called NIE. And it would then deploy that service using an open source uh, software defined SDN controller called ONUS. Um, it would uh, deploy the, the intent into the, the actual infrastructure and provide some feedback back to the user. So effectively, um, the user can describe what it wants in terms of connectivity, and the, that could result in a change in the whole configuration of the network. Uh, so, um, I will walk you through a bit on the technology that we have used and how uh, actually this works. So um, in order to support our, um, our chat box, uh, we're using a technology called Dialogflow. Um, it's an AI technology. Uh, so yeah, so Dialogflow provides an AI mechanism to extract information from natural language and uh, create from that uh, JSON uh, representation informations. Uh, so uh, by using this Dialogflow, uh, the output of the Dialogflow uh, model, um, uh, translate uh, that, that natural language into an uh, internal uh, intent representation um, uh, language which we call uh, which is called Nile. Uh, this is a language developed by some colleagues that we have used to um, represent our intents. It's a low level framework and you can see an example here on the left uh, and effectively it can be used to describe connectivity requirements between different network network endpoints. It supports the ability to deploy uh, in that end-to-end uh, -end connection and it allows also to describe to um, request specific QoS requirements uh, and um, um, uh, potentially also some schedule for the service. Um, so um, Nile is an excellent uh, language to express intents, but uh, we want it also to be able to express more advanced capabilities and intent framework. For example, uh, securing a specific, uh, providing some um, security services uh, or providing the ability to uh, enable resiliency in the delivery of a service. So um, we're using Nile as the baseline, but we have evolved the language and added new capabilities like the support for actions where the user can describe specific capabilities that can be enabled as part of the intent. Um, so, um, uh, so uh, dialog the, the output of the dialog flow is translated into a Nile intent, and then we can use this Nile intent again through another Heroku hook. Uh, through a Python-based compiler, we can translate uh, the Nile intent into an actual ONOS API call, which then can be fed through the ONOS API and effectively deploy the intent in the infrastructure. Now, as I said earlier, uh, we have a very nice uh, demo which you can find uh, in the in the website uh, of our uh, project, and I encourage you uh, afterwards to, um, uh, to to check it out. I find it very interesting. 
Um, and I'm just going because it's a bit long of uh, it's a bit uh, of a long demo. Uh, I will just walk you through a bit on some of the capabilities we present in that demo. So um, our system provides some basic capabilities to ask. Uh, the, through Google Assistant, specific information about uh, information about the infrastructure. Um, you can also use the Google Assistant uh, uh, service to uh, deploy specific services in the network. And we also demonstrate some advanced capabilities that we provide through our system. So um, our Google service, uh, our Google Assistant application provides the ability to, to uh, protect a specific service through an intent, uh, which has as a side effect that this intent uh, is immutable and nobody can uh, update it um, uh, while the service protection is on. Um, and uh, we demonstrate that in a subsequent request to update that specific intent, um, then uh, the system would return a failure. Um, in parallel, we have also integrated uh, our intent management system uh, with uh, a very interesting uh, predictive maintenance uh, framework developed by our colleagues in Cambridge, which I won't discuss in detail uh, in this talk, and I think they are scheduled later this year to present their work. Uh, but effectively, we can use um, information about potential um, um, errors in hardware to feed that through a Slack channel to the user. And the user then um, responding to this alert um, generated by the infrastructure can modify a protected service uh, in order to guarantee that the, that the intent is fulfilled um, um, and avoid any implications from this um, um, danger in deteriorating the QoS uh, performance of this uh, intent. Um, so uh, that covers the discussion uh, on how we design uh, the intent management. We can, uh, I think we will have also a small discussion at the end of this talk uh, for follow up uh, questions. Um, now, the second aspect that we have been exploring um, actively in this project is the ability to support dynamic intents. So, a lot of related literature focuses extensively on intents that they are deployed in the system. And there is a strong assumption that when the intent is deployed, uh, then everything should work fine and nothing can go wrong um, in the infrastructure. But, um, you know, most of us, we have the experience that networks are best effort, network failures are common, and misconfigurations um, uh, can also happen uh, in the network infrastructure. So, in order to guarantee uh, the, continuous the continuous fulfillment of an intent, monitoring uh, and val continuous validation of the goals of an intent is essential. And to, uh, to fulfill this goal, we are developing uh, a series uh, of uh, frameworks that allow the application of DevOps technologies in the network infrastructure. Um, so um, a quick uh, introduction to DevOps for those uh, of you that they might not be uh, familiar with the, with the topic. So um, in cloud applications, there is a strong trend in the recent years to be able to quickly uh, deploy in production um, code updates and new capabilities and new features and uh, bug fixes. Um, so in order to support this capability, um, uh, there is um, a large amount of platforms which are called uh, continuous integration platforms that they allow uh, a developer uh, to write, uh, to, 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 to perform some changes in the code, um, validate that change and ensure that this change doesn't affect the, the behavior of the program and uh, ensure that uh, it doesn't have any impact um, in the correctness of the service. Uh, and then um, if the tests are successful, um, all these code changes can be automatically deployed in the production environment. So effectively, um, you can have um, a code change being deployed in production within a few minutes. So this is a highly desired uh, capability for modern network infrastructures, given that right now a simple service request, for example, could take up to a month to be fulfilled by an ISP. Um, up until um, you know, a few years ago, um, supporting this type of capabilities wouldn't be that easy in existing network infrastructures because we lacked actually uh, deep programmable infrastructures. Modern paradigms like SDN and VNF provide uh, um, lots of opportunities to realize these automated deployment capabilities in a network infrastructure. So to support now um, the DevOps paradigm network environment, we are trying to follow a similar approach and we develop a platform for offline testing uh, whenever a new intent is being pushed into the system. 
or uh, any updates on VNF code is being uh, pushed again into um, the, uh, the intent management framework. And we also explore how we can provide precise and efficient monitoring for, um, uh, for intents uh, in our production environment. So for the first goal, uh, one of the things that we want to uh, explore, we want to, to support is the ability to ensure that uh, an intent uh, that's being fulfilled by the underlying infrastructure does not um, uh, face any problems, uh, any operational problems when it's being deployed in the real infrastructure. Um, so in order to support um, uh, this capability, we are using uh, a popular uh, network emulation um, uh, software, which is called Mininet. It's, uh, it's quite popular um, uh, for uh, SDN developers. Uh, and it's a software that uses container technologies and software switches to emulate large network topologies in a single uh, host. Um, so we're using that as the basis to recreate uh, realistic network topologies of the actual uh, deployment infrastructure. Uh, and in order to make more realistic our deployment, we also are currently exploring how we can extend Mininet to incorporate also realistic network models. So currently, um, Juniper and uh, Cisco, they provide, uh, op uh, not open source, uh, they provide the images of their operating system. And we're trying to see how we can integrate our Mininet uh, capability to also incorporate this type of images in the actual deployment of an intent. Um, so uh, using our system and our intent manager that I discussed earlier, we can use then the intent of the user, deploy it, so we can initially use the, the actual topology of the system to create our testing infrastructure and emulate it. And then we can use the intent, the user intent, uh, through our intent manager to actually deploy an emulated version of the final intent. And then by using the goals of the intent, we can use uh, the Mininet capability to run real applications to actually test if specific QoS properties and connectivity requirements are being met. So if anything goes wrong, then um, and the intent cannot be fulfilled, we can flag that to the user and ask for an updated intent to be submitted. Um, now, the second part that we're currently exploring is how we can actually also validate intents in the runtime. Uh, and there, one of the biggest challenges we have identified is that a lot of the systems that are currently available, they rely extensively on uh, what's available. So they would go and fetch low level uh, monitoring information from existing devices through mechanisms like NetFlow, SNMP, or run static probes across the network using Nagios. And then um, you would have to go through a lot of manual um, uh, processing of this data and offline analysis in order to understand whether there's something wrong in your network and understand also what caused this problem. Um, so this can be um, um, rather difficult if you want to actually have a dynamic framework to deploy intents. So in order to um, uh, overcome these challenges, we are currently developing a system which is called Unipro that tries uh, that tries to use uh, intents uh, to um, uh, it intent policies um, to uh, drive uh, the monitoring capabilities of the system and also uses lightweight VNF mechanisms like unikernels to provide end-to-end -end or point-to-point -point measurements as part of the infrastructure. So just to give you a small example, um, you know, in our, uh, in our existing uh, model, we would have an intent um, that does a basic deployment of a service that consists of a firewall, a load balancer, and a CASP, a typical CDN use case, for example. So this would be fed through our uh, intent manager and then pushed through our service orchestrator to the computer network managers of the system and we, we would be deployed in the infrastructure. And we could receive um, some low level monitoring information for uh, this service, like CPU memory utilization, some basic packet counter measures and potentially some QQ uh, metrics. Um, but if you want to um, evaluate, for example, uh, what the latency of the application looks like in this scenario, it's very difficult to reverse engineer these measurements to get this type of measurements. And also, if you go to modern high performance packet processing uh, infrastructures like uh, zero copy uh, pool based VNFs, for example, CPU and memory measurements from the underlying platform doesn't make much sense because you just sacrifice the CPU to run something like that. 
So um, what our goal is for the Uniprobe system is to effectively um, create a monitoring service that would sit between the intent manager and the service orchestrator. It would capture the final service description and uh, augment it with additional monitoring capabilities. For example, you can use some lightweight Unikernel to do end-to-end -end application measurements or some bandwidth estimation tools to uh, uh, validate whether the available bandwidth between um, the different hops of the service uh, fulfills the specific requirement of the end-to-end -end service. All this data then can be fed back to a Prometheus uh, time series database and they can be used later on uh, by our intent manager for validation purposes of the different goals of the system. So I will pass on now um, the token to my uh, colleague, Professor Wang, uh, to uh, continue with the presentation. Yeah, so uh, so uh, I'll pick this up. So basically, previously, um, Harris uh, basically um, uh, uh, talked about tip in a typical scenario where you run a network and how you can express specific, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, intent in order to optimize or protect your net own network infrastructure. And now uh, I, I'm, I'm moving on to a, 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 a more complementary scenario where uh, external clients of the net online network infrastructure provider could also express some intent or requirements. So you have this kind of, uh, let's say, um, a multi-stakeholder um, environment. Typically, we, we envisage a, 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 the minimum set of, let's say, three players in the, in the system, namely the network infrastructure provider, vertical service providers, as well as end users. So we can envisage, uh, let's say, different scenarios of how, uh, let's say, stakeholders could express their intent to each other. Okay, so uh, but if you look at the uh, top left scenario, that means basically the end user could run different applications uh, of the top. Uh, but if this uh, uh, this customer is an uh, is an uh, customer of a, a particular network operator, then I I, I can uh, let's express my intent to the network uh, in order to, in order to satisfy all the service performance uh, re uh, requirements. So I don't need to establish anything uh, 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 with my uh, individual vertical service providers. Okay, so there could be uh, other scenarios, uh, but uh, I'm not saying which one is valid, which one is not valid. Okay, this really um, is an open uh, question. But so our main focus today is the um, is this kind of um, uh, uh, bottom uh, bottom left scenario, uh, where the uh, service a uh, particular service a uh, vertical service provider like um, a content service provider provider could aggregate the common intent or requirement from its subscribers uh, and express this kind of intent uh, to the underlying network in order to uh, in order for the letter to let's say provide uh, let's say seamless uh, service assurance uh, to the uh, to the service of the top okay so uh, basically one interesting um, uh, uh, let's say uh, um, question to be asked is uh, if you look at the intent expressed by a content provider, content service provider to the underlying network or to express what is the business intent or service um, uh, targets it needs to uh, uh, um, uh, ask for. Uh, basically, we can have a spectrum of sort of possibilities how the uh, the intent will be expressed. Okay, so if you look at the first scenario, which is I want all my subscribers to have a mean opinion score above 4.0, which is a completely subjective uh, uh, metric. But of course, uh, um, uh, this is really a, not a scientific way to, to express because everything is, um, is, uh, um, is uh, can, uh, nothing can be scientifically, uh, let's say, very uh, verified, okay. Alternatively, uh, the intent could be specifically linked to the uh, application aspect, for instance, if it is a video, uh, content provider, then uh, uh, the, the intent could be I want all my subscribers to, to have guaranteed 4K video quality without playback stalling or, and also stop up delay less than one second, for instance. And this is a typical application specific uh, intent. Uh, but uh, the other possibility is uh, basically you translate your intent into specific network parameters, like um, I, I want subscribers to have guaranteed, let's say, 15 megabits per second data rate, which is typically 4K level, and less than, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, 20 millisecond network latency. Okay, so this is more like sort of traditional service level agreement between, let's say, uh, the 
the network client and the uh, and the network infrastructure provider. So, so basically, as you can see, uh, if we discount the first scenario, which doesn't uh, uh, make much sense, and then uh, uh, probably it is interesting, uh, let's say, issue to, to to look at how exactly the external, uh, let's say, service providers could, uh, let's say, express application specific intent to the uh, to the online network. And this is indeed one of the, let's say, um, let's say sort of topics we are, we uh, would like to investigate in the context of the NGCDI project. And uh, let's take an, an let's say example of uh, sort of a, a content service provider uh, sort of scenario just to have a more uh, in-depth uh, uh, um, uh, view. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, if you look at the, uh, let's say, typical content service providers uh, like Netflix or YouTube, basically they have each, each of these kind of large uh, content giants have, uh, let's say, millions of subscribers. Okay, and then we can we can uh, envisage this kind of, uh, let's say, probably a three stakeholder game where end users can express their own, uh, let's say, situation intent to the uh, service provider. But it is actually uh, down to the uh, content service provider to aggregate all these kind of less intent uh, uh, towards network. But don't, don't forget, actually, within the network itself, basically, the, the net operator will also express its own, uh, let's say, business intent, such as load balancing or failure protection. So that means the optimization of this kind of provisioning uh, of the network resources has to take into account the intent issued by different, uh, let's say, stakeholders, including both the internal intent in terms of internal uh, sort of, let's say, resource optimization and protection, where externally you need to uh, fulfill the intent of service um, level agreements um, uh, uh, expressed from the uh, from the uh, external, uh, let's say, uh, content service providers. So uh, in the context of project, basically we came up with a, um, a, a uh, um, initial, let's say, um, uh, toy-like uh, test uh, platform just to validate the idea of uh, the uh, this kind of, let's say, intent expression framework involving three stakeholders, in, uh, namely a user content provider as well as an online network. So uh, what we uh, what we try to implement here is a uh, is an intent engine which is actually the heart of the whole system that is able to, let's say, pass the intent expressed from the uh, content service uh, content service providers, and at the same time, because individual content consumers or individual users, they have their own situations, including the mobility pattern, including where they are, and this actually is the knowledge, uh, um, uh, let's say, obtained uh, from the network operator side. Okay, and then based on this kind of uh, inter engine, uh, the requirement will be, uh, let's say, passed or uh, uh, compiled into specific SDM based uh, um, configuration policies uh, to be fulfilled uh, in the underlying uh, data plane or user plane. Uh, that could in, uh, involve, uh, let's say, one or multiple virtual network functions such as caching or uh, video content acceleration. And in, in general case, basically, we conceive and sort of, let's say, end-to-end -end service function chain, uh, starting from the content source side uh, all the way towards the, uh, the, uh, the user side, okay. But of course, this kind of scenario could be also reduced, uh, in particular in the 5G environment, uh, into a, a mobile edge computing um, uh, system where the uh, the uh, the intent such as uh, sort of, let's say, fulfilling the um, the user code of experience uh, whenever the users are, including their mobility pattern, to be handled by the edge computing server. Uh, as a typical uh, virtual network function, okay, uh, and, and basically this is our uh, our initial current uh, uh, currently initial implementation of the standalone intent framework that allows the intent expression from the content service providers and also um, enable the SDN controller to uh, to let's say. Um, uh, receive the, uh, the, the past intent for specific network configurations, uh, even uh, upon some dynamicity or uncertainty, in particular with the user mobility uh, uh, um, uh, situations. Uh, so uh, we also uh, uh, try to uh, link this kind of intent-based framework into the concept of network slicing, which is a typical um, sort of um, uh, technology in, in the context of 5G. Okay, so if you look at the uh, network slice, typically it is a tailored network capability, not necessarily only referring to, uh, let's say, network uh, sort of capabilities like uh, bandwidth support and, load, uh, and uh, link delay, but it also involves other, uh, let's say, um, uh, 
uh, ICT support, including computing, storage, etc. So if you look at the end-to-end -end 5G slice, that has to be uh, a, a, a combined cap capability starting from RAN, which is the closest to the uh, to the uh, end users, uh, plus the transport uh, uh, transport uh, network in the middle, as well as the core network. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, uh, thanks to our uh, team uh, during the past few years, we have enabled, uh, so we realized this kind of end-to-end -end 5G slicing um, uh, um, at, at Surrey University. Uh, but now the key thing is, how can this be linked to uh, the, 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 the intent framework? So, for instance, if we receive an externally expressed intent, either from end user or from service provider, uh, basically we may have two um, specific options. Okay, the first is whether we can identify an existing network slice which can automatically satisfy the intent expressed uh, by the uh, by the uh, client. If that's the case, then the uh, the most straightforward. Uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, solution is just to use that particular network slice to support the incoming uh, uh, demand. Otherwise, uh, we can also conceive an on-demand or on-the-fly creation of new slice to fulfill the intent. And, and, and typically, this is scenario applicable to, let's say, sort of a vertical service providers uh, where uh, you can uh, um, uh, provision a dedicated network slice upon uh, the acceptance of this kind of um, intent or business uh, um, uh, requirements uh, in order to, let's say, uh, provision dedicated uh, resources for supporting such kind of thing, rather than uh, mixing uh, 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 with other types of traffic with, uh, with, within a common um, network slice. Right. Okay. So just 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 a few words on uh, our, our, our um, let's say uh, in, intention to uh, combine the intent framework into our uh, 5G uh, framework. So as I just mentioned, basically we have already uh, provisioned these kind of heterogeneous types of networks in the general 5G. Uh, uh, environment, including uh, uh, different access network, inclu including uh, um, satellites uh, and edge computing uh, facilities. And then uh, basically we currently have this kind of simple business layer, which provides uh, simple APIs for external client to express their requirements. But of, of course, without distant um, intent uh, expression uh, interface or framework, uh, the current um, uh, uh, platform only supports simple, uh, let's say, operations like tick the box or fill out a, f a simple form with uh, some target performance values. And then this kind of requirement will be, uh, let's say, computed in order to, uh, for the network operator to, 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 to um, let's say, come up with dedicated pipeline. Okay. But of course, in the um, uh, it is our future plan to, let's say, make this kind of intent expression platform to be more flexible. Okay, so not only including targets, performance target values, but also some more complex conditions or requirements which could be flexibly expressed from various type of um, uh, intent uh, clients. Uh, and the other thing is, as I just mentioned, uh, in some cases, uh, the the uh, to use uh, the uh, the five uh, G slice to support some sort of intent uh, demand requires on the on demand creation of a dedicated network slice. Uh, well, the, uh, apparently this will take a, a longer time as compared to the scenario where an existing network slice can be already uh, used for that uh, purpose. So that basically involves some sort of, let's say, uh, time consumption on the preparation of such kind of uh, network capability. Uh, so uh, if we, even if we talk about, let's say, simple uh, expression of network requirement, like uh, including, let's say, guaranteed bandwidth and low latency, this is a sort of set for um, um, uh, um, a basic requirement in, in terms of uh, intent expression, uh, uh, even creation uh, of a uh, new slice will take uh, probably 1.5 minutes to get everything ready. But we also need additional time to compute uh, or, or, or compiled intent into specific network configurations. So it is definitely a, a challenge to, uh, let's say, uh, to, to, uh, for us to explore, I mean, how, how in the future, um, uh, how quickly such kind of, um, uh, let's say, intent uh, compilation plus network uh, slice provisioning could be achieved in the future.
Okay, so I think this is the very last uh, slide, uh, which uh, aims to summarize what are the um, less envisaged technical challenges, and most of them will be tech specifically tackled in the rest of the uh, in the rest of the project lifetime. So as I just mentioned, uh, the first is uh, expression. Okay, so uh, the key uh, research issue is uh, how to maximize the degree of flexibility. Uh, uh, for the client to express the intent, okay, and and also depending on where who issues such kind of um, intent, whether we we, we should come aim for a unified uh, uh, intent interface, which should be ideal or separate, depending on whether the intent is issued from the uh, network operator or from the external clients. And also the other hard problem is translation. That means how you can translate. Uh, sometimes it is own, also known as compilation. Okay, uh, this kind of intent into specific low-level machine understandable configurations, and the, and this uh, may also go beyond the simple translation or mapping from the intent to, to specific network configuration, but it also in, involve optimization. And in, in, in the environment of dynamic situations, how to make sure this kind of intent uh, previously exp uh, uh, expressed uh, could be fulfilled. Okay, uh, and and also whether this kind of dynamicity um, uh, and uncertainty that happens in the ambient environment should be hidden from the intent client. That means no matter, I don't need to know what's happened, but this is my requirement. So uh, no matter what happened, this is the requirement you need to uh, give to me. Last but not least, this is also um, very important. That means if different stakeholders could express different or even conflicting intent, how to detect such kind of conf conflict and resolve them during the runtime and this, of course, is not a new concept in intent-based networking. Even back in policy-based networking uh, or policy-based network management, uh, conflict detection on policy is, is has already been there. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, more or less, uh, this is the uh, less in the summary. Basically, we just have a very quick review on the uh, uh, on the benefit on basic concept of IBM, uh, and then in the context of the uh, technical work carried out in the uh, NGCDI project, uh, um, uh, Harris mainly uh, talk about the management lifecycle of the um, uh, of the intent, uh, including capturing, translation, and uh, monitoring as well as uh, verification or validation. Uh, while the other scenario of usage is about a flexible intent. Uh, involving multiple stakeholder environments. Yeah, more or less that's from us. Yeah, so basically probably now it's time for um, for questions.